higher up people live in a building, the more relaxed they are about leaving windows open. First floor, absolutely not. What if someone gets in? First floor, well maybe. People won't get in, that's for sure. But still, don't leave them open if you're going on vacation. Anything higher than that seems pretty safe. Some windows people leave open literally all the time. I mean, what dangers might be waiting for you that high up? If you live above the 10th floor, you don't want to know. Leaving a window open can be both the most innocent and the most serious mistake you can make. I am not warning you about falling off a windowsill. Even windows that can be opened just an inch are dangerous. If there is even the slightest way in, he will find it. Stories of a creature that swims went around when I was a kid. Kids claimed that at night they saw something floating slowly down the street about 100 feet away. Everyone described the phenomenon differently. A small glowing ball, a creature with red eyes, a dark cylinder. But all the stories had the same notes. Around 3 a.m., they all looked out their bedroom window. They all saw something high in the sky, but not too high. They all immediately felt fear, even though nothing bad had actually happened, and they had to turn away. Now I found out why. I live on the 11th floor of this student dormitory. There are a few other people living in the kitchen. I don't know them very well. We only socialize out of necessity, although I think some of them are friends with each other. In any case, this means that whenever I am home, I am in my bedroom. I usually wake up pretty late, to play or to study, usually the former. Last night, though, was neither. I've been under a lot of stress lately and found myself sitting on my bed looking out the window. It was slightly ajar to let in a light breeze. I don't know how long I sat like that, it was just relaxing. It was nice to look out at all the night people. Some of them are clearly drunk and others are just walking around like it's not midnight. It is the second group that I find the most interesting. I catch myself making up stories, where they might go at this hour, who they are, and whether they do it regularly. At one point out of the corner of my eye, I noticed something, something not low or high, something at my level. It was hard to see it in the dark. I wasn't so much looking at it as I was watching its silhouette moving in front of the dimly lit windows of the building on the opposite side of the street. There was a light on in the room directly across the street. The curtains were open, and it was the best source of light I had. It didn't look like any kind of shape to me, more like a cloud of smoke. It wasn't rising. It was just moving in an unnatural way. I immediately remember childhood stories about the creature that floats. It began to approach my window, slowly, slowly, and even slower. But still it moved. All the while I kept looking back, as if something was already in the room. The thing was making me feel on edge. I thought that when it finally reached my window, I would be able to see it clearly. Upon seeing it, my imagination got carried away. Oh, it's just a bag in the wind, is what I was hoping to think. Instead, I discovered that my bedroom window was closed. There was blackness everywhere. It was as if my view of the city had become a window into the void. I felt dizzy and my vision diminished. It seemed wrong to look at it. Every bone in my body was telling me to turn away. But I'm glad I didn't, because I noticed that some of the smoke was starting to seep through the cracks of the window. I'd never closed it so quickly. I even locked it, which I have never done because why would you do that if you live so high up? I immediately felt a little better. The view slowly returned as the soaring being moved away. I had to lie down for a while and ventilate my head. I had a headache and it felt like she was punishing me for not looking around. Despite this, once it passed, I sat up again and looked out the window. I noticed that the light in the room across from me was no longer on. At least that's what I thought until I looked closer. It was there. It had closed their window and gotten in. Their window must have been open more than mine because it didn't take it long for it to get in. I never saw it leave because at that point I closed the curtains and never looked outside again. This morning people are talking about a man who was found dead across the street. I don't know for sure but my intuition tells me that he must have lived in the room I saw him enter. I haven't told anyone what I know yet. I'm afraid to. But today I have been pondering what this thing is. I think I understand his behavior now. It's clear that it feeds on humans, but what if it also hates being seen? It only travels at night. 
high enough that it is not illuminated by street lights, but low enough that it can climb into windows. It always has a different shape for each person, the one that scares them, not the one that scares them. People like to look at things that scare them, but we always turn away from things that seem creepy to us. Everything about it says it hates to be seen. A silent killer that only targets those who think they are safe and make sure you never see it. So if you live above the 10th floor, do not leave your windows open. Only if you are prepared to come face to face with the hovering creature.